Heavy metal rock and accounting are not often thought of as being closely related. But Washburn Guitar promises customers that each guitar represents the finest quality at the best possible price. The challenges and demands involved in manufacturing a high quality guitar must be effectively captured by the job order costing system in order to accurately measure the costs of this process. Oh, ah! You might think that all guitars are made in the exact same way, using the same resources. However, significant variability can exist from one guitar to the next. For example, Dan Donegan is guitar maestro for Disturbed, one of the most popular hard rock bands on the planet. They've sold over 7 million albums. Washburn Guitar makes Dan's signature model guitar. Job order costing was used to guide the development of this guitar, keeping it separate from other guitar production and on a profitable track. Guitar enthusiasts follow the leading guitarists and sometimes choose the same equipment, like the Maya, a guitar created for Dan Donegan of Disturbed. This strengthens Washburn's relationship with Dan and his millions of fans. They're working on this uh, guitar for me. They wanted to come up with the signature model uh, guitars. I wanted something that, uh, you know, not too far out there, nothing that was too wild, but something that was definitely going to be identifiable. Eric and, and Chewy originally came up with the first design, and they did like three designs for him. And um, he, he liked them, but he, he had one that he favored best, and that's the white one that's in the CAD, the CAD room. This is the actual original first one we built. And I mean, as you can see, where he made his small chains, this one we had go a little smaller. We had a completely different headstock, which is pretty unique, but I think it was just a uh, little too much for him. Once the design was finalized, it became a more typical production process, except that everyone was a bit more motivated because it was such a special project. Here are the main steps in the production process. We take an idea, we give it to our AutoCAD engineer, he then draws a mock-up of it, we approve the drawing, uh, and then it's ready to go to the machines. Uh, the software we have to use is computer aided drafting and it's basically done first on the computer and then it's ready for the machines. The drawing allows us to look at certain aspects of the guitar and make sure things are okay, the string, whether it be the string alignment, uh, if we're looking at different views, how the string angle is going to come over the pickups and so on. the drawing will then give the rough mill cut sheet and what they'll do is they'll select the wood they'll cut it up they'll take it to uh, thickness using various machines and it'll then be machine ready once the wood is processed through the rough mill and taken down to thickness it's then machine ready and basically it comes to our CNC machines uh, anything we can draw on AutoCAD, computer-aided drafting, we can cut on our CNC machines. We happen to have four here. This is currently cutting out an N4. Here's the finished piece. Once the machine uh, cuts the parts, they're moved into their various departments. Uh, this is a neck, basically. We've moved into the neck department. It'll then be assembled. From the neck assembly, it'll end up looking like this. Well, once the neck is then made, it is brought over to the body department where they're matched up, and then there'll be detail sanded where they're looking at the carve, the roundovers, and basically ma making sure it meets our quality standards. Well, for final sand department, it'll come into what we call grain fill or body fill department. That's where the porous wood then gets filled with uh, a material that is easy to wipe off, but it also fills up the pores of the wood to make it easier for us to paint. Here we are in the paint department. After grain fill, they'll, go, they'll start the paint process where they'll get four or five coats of undercoat, uh, a color coat, then they'll start basically the top coat process, which could be five and then another three layers of top coat. All this ensures uh, three things. It polishes up nice and keeps them flat 
and it makes them looking like glass. <laughs> Well, we're here in the leveling department, which is part of the paint department. Every guitar is sanded throughout the paint process to keep the guitar flat. The flatter we keep it, the easier it is for our paint and also on our buffers. <laughs> Here we are in the buffing department, where after the final top coat of paint goes on to the uh, guitar, it'll then sit in the dry room for two weeks. After two weeks, it'll then be pulled out, where it'll be leveled and then buffed. For final buff, it then comes to a subassembly, and subassembly entails reaming out the holes clear of all paint, taking off the tape, uh, oiling the fretboard and then basically starting to put the components on. From the sub-assembly bench, it then comes to the final assembly bench, where then Don will then put the strings on, tune it up, intonate it, play it, and make sure that it's within our quality standards. Okay, after it's played and tune tested by Don, it then gets the seal of approval and it goes into the case. It then gets a tag that was signed by all the department heads. It's put in the case and hung at the store. There are hundreds of opportunities for costs to slip through the cracks in a process like this, and it takes discipline to follow them accurately. To begin with, the Maya Pro DD75 had a special design team that included the artist, Dan Donegan. It also includes a range of features and high-end components that you don't find on average guitars. We use the highest quality components. Dan specifically chose an El Diablo uh, bridge pickup from Seymour Duncan on that guitar. And there's another Seymour Duncan pickup that he uses for his neck pickup. These materials justify a higher price, and so does the additional handcrafting and care that goes into the construction. When they set the price for the Maya Signature model, Washburn managers needed a clear understanding of all the costs that go into each guitar. The main costs tracked for this type of project are associated with direct materials and direct labor. In many cases, there are indirect materials and indirect labor costs, and machine hours to include as well. Then, a certain percentage of overhead is applied to the total. Direct materials and direct labor costs are those that can be easily tied to the product, like the wood and the sanding, respectively. Indirect costs might include the scrap wood that's usually generated when perfecting a new shape for a guitar neck, or safety meetings on the proper use of a new tool. Applying overhead to a job like the Maya isn't an exact science. Managers factored in the special aspects of the project and their contribution to the job and adjusted accordingly. There's a lot of time that goes into, um, administrative time that goes into working with Dan Donegan, Dan Donegan's managers. We had to go through a large number of prototypes for this guitar. There was probably about four to five different prototypes that were made before we got it right. Job order costing may not be as likely to catch your attention as a heavy metal concert, but effective managerial accounting can benefit most every business endeavor, even one as loud as this. Oh, ah, ah, ah. Get up, come on, get down with the city.